So I hope you got some idea about what is archaeology, what is excavation procedures and also what is pattern. So asking the basic question, why archaeology? Archaeology takes us really back into a very significant range of human past on this planet. And if we discard archaeology, it is as good as we losing 99.99% of humanity. And we are very like to, likely to be locked in the present. You know, the present it has all temptations, all adventures, knowledges, travels, everything is there. Films, achievements. But the basic question is, we may withdraw from asking some basic questions like, humbling questions like, who am I? Where did I start my journey? How did it proceed? Where I reached and where I am heading to? Archaeology provides some answers for this by taking us to deep humanity and nature. In this, archaeology to me is a very subversive knowledge domain with the strength to redefine us. At practical levels, I think it has great potential to provide job employment to sensitive and thinking young women and men like you. And equally important, it can provide a vision. It can provide the fuel for alternate living on this planet. Today, my talk is all about showing you, I can't help showing you, the materials, because probably after those people touched them 2,000 years back, you know, it is we who are touching it. So I cannot explain without showing you these materials. Materials, as Shaji was rightly saying, we seek the time and space in it. It is not just that, we are also interested in the emotions, he is worried about it. And we are not expected to say anything, even a lie for explaining a truth. We have to be objective, scientific to the very, very core. So I have to show you the material evidences that emerged and its larger significance of an urban society existing in this region, really 2,000 years back. If you look at the urbanization history, we will understand that there was the first phase. I know you all know Mohenjo-daro. Actually, it had four sister civilizations. One is Nile, Egyptian. The other is Mesopotamian. The other one is Chinese and the Mayan. This happened around the third millennium BC. And you know, it was at the peak. It's amazing, you know, how it emerged, and also we don't know how it declined and disappeared. There are many theories. And only lately we understood that the Indus and the Mesopotamian, they are little related. All other things were independent of each other. So this is the first phase and comes the next phase. Actually, that happened around the first millennium BC. Unlike the four, five centers in the first phase, this meant innumerable port cities emerging inland cities emerging, and its connections made possible by maritime roads. That was the only po possibility, Suresh traveled to London. But these people had to depend on water media, and there was no other go. 100 years even back, it was things were like that. So this is the amazing picture of more than 40 cities. Yesterday I was asking young friends like Shyam and Christy, do you love the city? Yes, sir. We very much love. Yes. That loving for urban life started much early. And this process was intensified through a maritime activity in the first millennium BC. And this picture shows actually the central role played by 
Indian subcontinent in the second phase of the urbanization. It happened because of three trade routes. One is the spice maritime route, the other was the spice maritime route, and the other is the aroma or incense. That's quite old, you know, you might have heard about Poond. There was a huge legendary city, but nobody knows where it is on ground. So till now we hardly knew where was Musiris, which was also known like that as a very legendary port. So this was fundamental in transforming Indian Ocean into a trade lake. And the Indian subcontinent played a very significant role in transforming Indian Ocean into a trade lake. So this is a quite experience, this is a wonderful experience I want to narrate through the matter, the material and also the effort to make them speak. I hold in my hands two wonderful objects. You know, like a filmmaker, you know, we are interested in bringing out the emotions, technology, aesthetics. So many things are expected to it and make it speak to you and me. So if I hold this like this, this is from the lowest layer when our ancestors started living there. This is called black and red ware. And this is a Chinese shed, which is, you know, the context was carbon dated and we clearly know this belonged to 1000 BC and this belongs to 1500 BC, 1500 AD. So Patanam is in fact the story of what lies in between. And the significant area, cultural layer seems to be called early historic, and I just want to look at the urbanization process through this illustration. There are a number of things being told in this illustration. What is urbanization? It's a very basic fundamental question. It's a kind of complex, a society becomes more complex. You have specialists, you have management studies, students. I used to laugh at them, what do you really manage? We have to look at, because specialization is growing. I, even I, they were telling there are more specialization when, they have, when it comes to, you know, assignments and so many things. So specialization in urban life is inevitable. It is new technology, new thinking, so many things. It is also in a way we are organizing life differently. So technology comes, specialization comes, production for exchange rather than consumption comes, regular for, foreign trade comes. Writing systems emerged. Even in our society, it was this phase that we started writing. Also, rise of cities, new ruling classes, new social groups, emergence of exact and predictive sciences, art, artists, even organized religions emerge in a powerful manner during this phase. So my effort will be to look for these elements or traits in the Patanam finds. You know, Patanam has produced a huge, it's a paradise of small finds. Because small finds, they do big th stories, they tell big stories. And you can go on telling the emotions about that to fill probably any number of volumes of books. So this is a fascinating journey. And let us start looking into them and try to make sense of it. If the whole pottery, you know how much it is? It's a staggering 4.5 million, 45 lakhs of pottery we got from Patanam from these layers. So when we sort out, we will understand that the 99% belongs to the Indian subcontinent. And there is only 1% that is about 1,40,000 plus belongs to the known Indian regions. It's an amazing picture. You know, it is a very important perspective. You know, we were Eurocentric, we were always looking westward. Even understanding archaeology, it was a big problem. You know, when we started this excavation, many people said, so they found a Roman site in India. How? It's an Indian site having Roman connections, not a Roman site. This is the evidence for it. We have Indian pottery from Indian subcontinent. So when we distribute that pottery of non-Indian, how that connections come emerge? Let us start from the East. Usually we start from Europe. So here 
we have the Chinese. I'm not going to tell you which are all those. It takes a lot of time. So here we have the Mesopotamian South Arabian region. We have the torpedo jars. We have the glazed green pottery. We have the old jars. We are not sure what they brought within it. And in Egypt, in Turkey, the whole of Europe, that is Eurasia and Europe, you find amphoras bringing wine, olive oil, and fish sauce. Some kind of a fish pickle. So 11 sites so far has been identified in different parts of Europe and Eurasia, having be arrived at Putnam. And next. I'll show you this important shade. This is actually called Indian roulette ware. I call it as Indian Ocean Pottery. It is found across the oceans. Almost all 40 sites carry samples, and we got a substantial number, about 11,000 plus. This category is also equally significant. It is the beads. We got nearly one lakh of beads of very different colors, beautiful things. It is found all over Indian Ocean and also uh, across the uh, littoral of Indian Ocean, Red Sea and Mediterranean. Now let us go into the kind of elements I talked about as technology. How urbanization is built is based on this kind of technology and specialization. At Patnam we find metallurgy was very, very developed. I'll just go through the many elements this is the crucibles. This is the different types of tools. Not very many weapons. They were peace-loving people. They were not interested. You know, trade generally is very peace-loving. They don't like hartals. They, they want to do business. So this is also maybe true. We are yet to find very harming material for aggressive things, but more domestic and also things for export. Production contacts like furnaces. These people knew the use of copper. Yes, this is one element that is very important. We get a lot of materials in gold. Like modern day Kerala, probably these people were also interested in gold and they made fine jewelry. It means that goldsmith was working in this location because we get small bits and pieces of ornaments. So also they made fine stone molds. This was probably meant for making pendants and also stone, uh, I mean, ring, ring, uh, uh, ring, uh, rings. So this is also an indication to show that these people knew weaving, a very important find. The other important evidence that emerges is on the lapidary workshops or the stone working. They were excellent artisans and different stages of its making is found in the site. And it involves burial, carnelian, Garnet, quartz, chalcedony, all sorts of semi-precious stones are found. This is also interesting because this is a raw material in oval shape used for making medallions. Europeans and you know, people in big authority and power used to have medallions all over their body. Generals had their typical medallions. So this was sent in large numbers from Patanam. You know, this came from probably Gujarat, Dakar area, and it was exported from here. You know, we get also finished items like this, inlays and pendants, and also ring stones, and also the way, you know, art was developed. Morning, somebody was referring about Fortuna. This is a Roman goddess, like our Lakshmi. It was found in a Carnelian stone, and this was leaping lion. You know, this, is, this animal is not known to us, in fact. Only in Gujarat, you know, we have lions, but from a workshop, probably, in Patanam, we got it. This is all about the monetization you know, many historians believe that this was a very, very primitive age. Monetization was there. We got really 140 plus uh, uh, materials, uh, uh, coins. So urban features, the city, you know, becomes different, having different monuments. The brick structure was extremely extensively used. You have brick foundations of this period. You have platforms and probably a warehouse because it was found very near a wharf context. And this could be a very amazing find. You know, these people used roof tiles, which normally we think that was coming with the British or the Portuguese. No, it was in practice. And for the architects, I think this find is quite interesting. 
this is a toilet feature. You know, urbanization also is quite sophisticated in the sense that there is a different self-respect emerging. This self-respect demands, you know, respecting privacy of the other. So they imagined a space like a toilet feature. And why architects should take note of it, you know, it was so eco-friendly. It was something like three huge ports placed one over the other, with the bottom of it broken to the other. And we have lost how the seating was done and all because they were, might have been made of wood, wonderful wood. So this is something very interesting and the engineering is very similar to what we do. You see the living level there and the level of the sockage or drainage pits. And these people also knew to make wells like we do. They made it of terracotta wells and also storage jars of huge size. This is certainly for exchange and certainly for storing. Uh, we are very happy that we are getting botanical finds also from the site. Very lucky because, you know, we have uh, acidic soil in Patna. And also, we have, you know, a lot of rain and moisture soil. And therefore, it decays organic material. However, things survive and we had black pepper, we had cardamom, we had rice, frankincense, etc. And the most surprised find was the skeleton remains from which when we managed ancient DNA studies, we found that it was really a place where people from all kinds, Suresh was telling about Sarojar Ekdam. Yes, it was also a place where admixing of all kinds of people were happening in our coast. They belong to Eurasia, Europe, and the entire South Asian regions. So it is not we driving anywhere. People were moving crisscross, and they wanted no visa, passport, they celebrated life, probably, I'm romanticizing sometimes, I don't know, but really life was different then. And this is also very interesting, these people knew writing. Incidentally, it happens to be the only evidence for religious presence. I think these people were a little more, they could remain a little above this kind of formulations, or rather very liberal. And this is a kind of a shade which is written Amanar. It means, it is in Brahmi script, and it means a senior Buddhist or Jain monks. When I see you, I look for them, because you are in that lineage, probably. Another exciting find was this wharf context. Again, engineering, architecture, everything comes in. They survived 2,000 years. This is a mix of lime, clay, laterite, crumbs, our surki. It could be the same thing, and we got a six meter wooden canoe. Actually, this gives a maritime context and exchange, and also it is dated as first century BC, first century AD. Okay, now see, we have identified a site like Patnam in the 21st century. We have a great moral, intellectual responsibility, obligation to the future. A nation which is proud about its heritage should see that it is conserved in the best scientific traditions. So KCHR has evolved a vision about it and also, as mentioned earlier, has started certain initiatives like this. And I need your support for the same. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>